Who's that? Uh, who has long arms? Uh, are you I referring to? Are pretty long. Nah, mine are pretty. Nah. Andrew, yours are terribly short. <laughs> a regular old T Rex. That's Tyrannosaurus Rex for all you non anthropologists. Are we going already? Is this it's going. <laughs> show? Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's... Yeah, that was. All right. Yeah, we start. We need Buzz banter. Vendering with Disciple. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, yeah, leaving, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving all that in there. Who I know has you are. Long arms. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to the prelude of this episode, you will know. Oh, we should put it in the negative space before. That's good. So you yeah. put the CD in and then you huh? hold rewind. The first did, album that I had that did that. Did we, that's a problem. Did we talk about me and you wrestling the other day <laughs> on a podcast? Speaking of things that are on topic, um, <laughs> it is. It's talking about long arms. Oh, okay. All right. We we had moved on to we had, no, no, we had moved no, on no. to the the CD backwards, the beginning space. Did you ever do that on a disciple album? A track what? zero. That, what did you uh, even say? He's like that hit track where you had to you could only get to it by rewinding the CD. I've never even heard of that. Oh man, dude. Limp Biscuit had one. <laughs> it Busted. <was> awesome. <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that right. Biscuit. <laughs> That's good. Reliant K mm-hmm, had one. And that was the first time I experienced. You uh, look like I, you're very thoughtful right now. I, I'm trying to think of another record that had one. I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember anymore. Hangnail had the hidden track at the end, which I know more bands did that. Classic. But yeah, the last track was like a half hour long, so you'd have to skip all the way to yep. the end, and then it was... <laughs> The guy, the guitar player, somebody trying to learn how to scream. Oh, that's into awful. so he's just yelling into the mic for ten minutes as loud as he can. Isn't that so funny that just because CDs were eighty minutes or whatever, it's like bands would get done and be like, "Well, we got a forty-minute album. Why don't we uh, put thirty minutes of nothing on it, <laughs> so that people will have to fast forward and listen to our joke at the end?" Yeah. Did you ever have a hidden track? Yeah, well, it, was, it wasn't very hidden. It was just, like, not printed on the back. Gotcha. So the self-titled had tribute on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think it, the word tribute was printed on the back or whatever. So nice. they called it a hidden track, but it was, like, not very hidden. It just <laughs> Very like, easy to find. It just started right at the end of the album, yeah. It's like when you hide Easter eggs for your kids, and it's, like, just in the grass right there. Yeah, you just literally, like, you know. Just look at it. Yeah, put it on their forehead when they woke up that morning. <laughs> Where is it? You could almost say that song volunteered as tribute to be on the album. Oh. <laughs> that was pre-Hunger Games, bro. Pre-HG. Uh, that sounds like a, some kind of steroid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, wrestling. Oh, no. You, you lost your opportunity to hear about that story by... I'm making fun of me. I'm sure it'll come back You'll around. Learn your lesson next time. Uh. Oh. Hey, Josh O. Josh, what you got for us today? You got any Wild hotel? I got a show for you today. You got any hotel reviews? For what you us? got? <laughs> oh, we're doing a show today. Oh, that's true. Besides that, that's what I've got for you: your gear <laughs> setup and your sound check. Hey, you thank go. you. Josh has been You're learning welcome. computer code and writing programs. He's basically writing a new like software program to it's do our for lights NASA. for us. For NASA. <laughs> NASA. We're gonna do a show in space. Oops. He knows I love Spider-Man, so he's learning to build a website. Dude, it's oh. out of this world, man. <laughs> <laughs> you will, you will marvel upon it. Oh, you will. That was, that was actually that was actually pretty good. Really, you're just gonna lick your lips? That's your way of like just showing your appreciation for that joke. I hear a hotel review. That was good. Yeah. Any other hotels? Any good, any what do you think about? You stayed in lately? I haven't been in a hotel in a long time. I don't know. I love when I was listening back to the episode, Joe. I love how someone said something about Four Seasons, and he just like, and that's what turned you that's into it. He's like, he, it was locked and loaded in the chamber, ready to fire. He was a like, hotel press tone. It was so good. <laughs> well, that was the uh, yeah. If you missed the last episode, you, we had our first installment of <laughs> hotel reviews with Josh O. Um, I wasn't and, here though. No, well, we we oh, did it vicariously. Me, we covered it without you. <laughs> yeah, it was we, by proxy. Um, so we'll we'll definitely get the next installment of that ready for the next episode. Does that mean it was approximately like his review? It was. It was. Yeah, we accurately <laughs> described all of the words that he said. So today we have some guests with us. We have some VIP um, tour VIP tour guests yes. with us. We have Travis Daryl Eden. He can't just be Travis Eden. He has to be <laughs> Travis Daryl Eden. Yes. Or is it or is it Darrell? Darrell. Yeah, I usually it's, read it as Daryl. It's Daryl. Because he's Darrellist. 
Travis Darrell Eden. <laughs> That's his. All right. That's his rap name. Darrell Eden. Darrell. I'm the realist. Um, it's good. Who, who else? We have Sarah Johnson here, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Hi. I don't know her middle name, or otherwise I would I would say. What is no, your but name? Nobody oh, knows it? my middle name. We're Sarah, keeping it Sarah, nobody knows names. my middle name, Sarah, Johnson. Sarah, nobody yeah. knows my middle name, Johnson. <laughs> that goes go back to that the that last thought. episode as well. Yep. Because we are talking about how uh, <laughs> Jesus did the whole, you're drowning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, how do I sum that up? That's it's, a hard It's too much. You just got to go back and listen to it. We're doing a lot of throwbacks these days. Yeah. Uh, trying it's to even Thursday. We're trying to establish continuity. Hey man, that joke went south, went deep real quick. <laughs> what? Sinking? They're sinking. Ah! Gosh. <laughs> Go on, Josh. <laughs> he's he's so, waving me away. You help, so you gotta help me. Remember. Being I was trying to do your thing. <laughs> no. It's all good. Oh, I'm leaving anyway. Absolutely. Bye, Josh. <laughs> Travis and Sarah are here, and. Uh, they are longtime friends of Disciple, so it's cool to be hanging out with them. A lot of times we do these VIPs, and we, uh, you know, we're meeting someone for the first time. We actually had a VIP uh, last week who came from Canada, first of all, and it was his first time ever seeing us. Like wow. we had never met him, and his first experience was a VIP experience. That it was, was really cool. It was also his first time ever out of ice skates. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He, he walks like an American. Hey, that joke borders on inappropriate. It was an A plus. Ah, <laughs> nice. He was walks like an American. Is that what it was? That's how you say it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I wasn't born. Okay. <laughs> is that the Bangles? Uh, yes, that is. Yes. The second, Star Bangled Banner. That's second grade for me. Nice. Yeah. Well, we know the walk like a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> was that apologetics? Yeah. Uh, no, it was uh, Super Chick, right? Did they do that? Yeah. Barlow Girl. Barlow Girl. Barlow. Oh, wow. Gosh. Really? Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Um, okay. All that to say, uh, we we meet a lot of new people in these VIP experiences, uh, but today we've got familiar faces around. The uh, Sarah and Travis come to a lot of shows. Which comes from the Latin word familia. Familia. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Family. Familiar. Part of the disciple when, uh, family. When you're here, family. you're familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How many shows have you been to, Travis? Do you know? I think this is 14. 14? Tomorrow is 15. Nice. Oh. Fantastic. Sarah? This has a cool disciple I'm tattoo. I'm somewhere in the 20s. I would have to do no, the math again. No, we know again. how old you are. I was how many disciples <laughs> are you? <laughs> also somewhere in the 20s. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> she sees this once a year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since she was born. Is, since, since Disciple has started, she's average seeing us once yeah. a year. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been cramming all the past 20 some years into the past yeah. eight oh, years. Oh, yeah. She You're counts. catching up. She counts yeah. when her mother came to the shows in the 90s as, as she, she was, was there. Yeah. 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 I am Wait, about happen? 100% sure my mother has never been to a Disciple <laughs> okay. show. That would be a cool story. We don't endorse heart attacks and, and scaring people to death. So. Oof. Oh, I see. Yeah. So every mom is scared to death at our shows? Is Her that mom would be. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Absolutely. Is your mom? My mom would have been scared to death, but then she had to like endure me um, like air guitaring to music as loud as it could possibly go in my room. <laughs> so it warmed her up, you so know. So by the time it eased the heart attack. By the time she actually came to a disciple show, she like knew what to expect, you think? She knew what to expect. She knew to bring uh, earplugs covered by headphones. Nice. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. What what was she listened to on those headphones during the show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a soothing, like... Like Gaither stuff. <laughs> she would, indeed. She would, indeed. See, that's a that's a rare thing that pe- most people don't know. My, my father was a choir director growing up, so yes. I grew up listening to a ton of Southern gospel. A lot. So, the, the Gaithers... Uh, like any of the, any Southern Gospel that was the the last name of the family, <laughs> the Martins, like the the, the Tallies, the, the Partridge family, uh, <laughs> the, the Tallies, the Neelands, the Brady Bunch, you know, like all of these these family Southern the monkeys, yeah, the Waltons. <laughs> I did listen to a lot of the monkeys actually. They, did you? they were before my time, but they were you on know. they were reruns on TV a lot. Yep, they're a major influence on the Beatles. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the Beatles tried is to make a, movies. Cause of the that, please tell me that's not true. That's, no, it's the other way around. From, uh, that's a line from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's looking through the jukebox. He's like, ooh, they got the monkeys. You know, they're a major influence on the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. 
Actually, thinking about it, Anna, I think my mom was at Sunshine a couple of years, so um, oh, there you go. she might have actually seen you guys. I don't she remember. She was okay? She made it through? She's all right? Good. Barely. All right. Good. <laughs> she did not intentionally, actively listen to us, maybe, but she might have caught some in passing. Pretty much. She I sat don't. on like her little tarp in the back and took a nap for most of the festival. Okay, this is actually, I think, could be a cool question. Name your parents' uh, favorite band. Uh, my dad's favorite artist is Tom Petty, I think, mm-hmm. if it's not the Beatles. Super cool. And uh, my mom's, oh man, Keith Urban. Nice. She, I didn't know she liked country music. Yeah, yeah, they love that stuff. Whenever they come to Nashville, they're like all about going to the Opry and um, going to Frothy Monkey, trying to see Keith Urban. Hee-haw! <laughs> <laughs> We're back with more Joy West effects. <laughs> Love it. West effects. West effects. That's good. That's cool. It's easy. My dad would anything. Uh, we we bought him for uh, Christmas one time, like uh, tickets to a Bill Gaither show, Gaither vocal band show. So they they're all about it. It's awesome. I heard my dad listen to Boston mostly growing up, um, but he'd always love Boston, like Def Leppard, Guns N' Roses, stuff like that. Wow, your dad, I'm um, awesome. Yeah, and uh, mom, I don't really know. I mean, she likes country music, but I remember when I was a kid, she was like in love with Boys to Men, <laughs> and she had a Boys to Men cassette tape. Yes, and wow. so uh, a wide range of people to be in love with. Yeah, true. Boys to Men, all ages. Really. Yeah. <laughs> was she disappointed that you didn't join a two men group like that? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> was she disappointed that you didn't join like a like a slow jams vocal band? Next question, please. Oh, I'm only here, so I won't get fined. To the end of the joke. Oh, nice. Oh. All right, so early. my mom, I think, would be Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, The Beatles, and my dad really only listened to worship music when we were growing up. He was a pastor, so I think he had to. Um, oh, that's, that's a rule. A that's, yeah. a rule. That's, that's a rule. They check on you. Um, Dude, especially in mega churches, you better not be listening to anything. <laughs> All right. Every episode. Let's, let's just go. Every episode. He's <laughs> if ready your go. congregation is over a thousand, run! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, no, how much? What is a mega? What constitutes a mega? More than four services. Hey, uh, <laughs> any church that has fish oil in their diet, that's usually like an omega any, church. Oh my oh. gosh. Any, any church that has a, a pretty boy pastor that can't actually. Stop! Oh, stop. My <laughs> oh my gosh. You better not edit that out. I'm not going to, but you better stop or I will. (laughs) We're we're forwarding all the emails to you. Yeah, for real. (laughs) All attractive male pastors are anathema. Hey, hey, I don't know what that worship, word means. Worship me in the name of my church. All right, don't that's enough. Get away from here. Anathema is a Catholic term for being cast out or excommunicated. That's very educational. Thank you. Rough. Link your Webster. <laughs> Sarah, parents music. My dad's a Michael Card fanboy. Michael Card? Michael Card? Nice. Is that so I grew up listening to a lot of that. It's um, Christian Celtic. Oh, nice, yeah. So, um, I'm not sure who my mom's favorite right now is, but similar type stuff. Okay, so classic Christian contemporary stuff. A lot of Michael Card, a lot of Rich Mullins. Nice. Um, Oh, Rich Mullins. Love Rich Mullins. Who was the Celtic group that we played with on my iPad? That foreign country, was it Iona? In Finland. In Finland? Ooh. Who was it Iona? Iona's a DVD. I can't remember. I what can't remember called. the name of it. I think it was Iona. Okay. They were awesome. Yeah. Did you, did you ever hear of them, Iona? Your family? Celtic stuff? <laughs> Michael Cart's cool. Travis? Uh. Well, my dad, a lot. I would see, like, Three Dog Night. Nice. Um. I just. That's my father in law's <laughs> favorite band, is Three Dog Night. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. It's. it's uh, I never really paid attention Fair to enough. his music. <laughs> uh, I kind of had my own style. Nice. Three Dog Night song. Uh, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Da, da, da. Was a good friend of mine. I don't know. Keep going. Joy <laughs> to the world. Oh, the boys and girls. No. 
Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Beethoven. Beethoven, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're thinking of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Also, a great Three Dog Night cover. (laughs) 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 Uh, No, they also had... One is the loneliest number that Nana knew. And Mama told me not to come. Mm, 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 All right. Really? Well, um, <laughs> what what I would like to point out is that you are that infomercial from like 10 p.m. and after right now, and many more. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get this entire CD collection, dude. With cassettes. It must have just been because we were homeschooled, but we would watch TV a lot when I was a kid, my brothers and I, and we would see the Ooh. infomercials for these CD collections, and. We would like get to where we knew just the commercial. We didn't know any of the actual songs, but like we had memorized the yes. flow of the commercial, yeah. and we would be like, oh, so we were like clips of the song, exactly yeah. clips and of the songs. Oh, it's in yellow, the one and, that's playing now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there was finally this one. Oh, what was it called? Yeah, that's what I called <laughs> it was called like set. Easy Rock or something. It was like a yeah. three CD set, and we begged. We saw the commercial every day. We begged our parents to buy it. It was probably fifty bucks or something stupid. <laughs> and finally, they were like, "All right." We'll buy it for you. They bought it. We never listened to it. <laughs> like, we didn't want to hear the full songs. We just loved the the the, the highlight reel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did that? Was that included? They didn't have a track of that. Are you saying they bought it for you and you never listened to it? We probably played it one time and then we were like, eh, this is lame. You weren't into it. It was like, um, a lot, like uh, if you like pina coladas, <laughs> a bunch of like. 70s, 80s. Um, on Guardians of the Galaxy, awesome mix, volume right. one, which I yes. listened to like all the way through three times in the last two days. That's awesome. Absolutely. Is I that mean, on Google Play, or is that on? There's, there's like playlists made, you know. Okay. I feel it. Classic. Do they still, do they still make the uh, now? That's what I call music CDs. I think like, so. are they on like volume 87 They're yet? Close to triple digits. It's, it's got to be high. I was, I was alive for the first one. Same, yeah. Yeah, it was like, wow. And then it eventually jumped to like, now that's what I call music 13. It's like, man, this never ends. Well, (laughs) It was weird because at first it seemed like they were doing every year, but then, yeah, you all of a sudden were like, wait a minute, how are they on 18 or 19 by now? So did you say what your mom's was, your mom's favorite? Uh, No, I haven't done that. Um, She listened to Bread, which I don't know anything about. Bread, okay. Do we know any of their songs? I'm pretty sure bread doesn't make noise, guys. It just sits there on the table. True. Maybe oh. as you listen to it rising, maybe it's making some kind of noise. <laughs> well, I yeast it. Rise, my loaf. Rise, my loaf. Rise. 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 Wow. I'm telling you guys, you never know. <laughs> Man. True that. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so it wasn't Bread of Stone? <laughs> well, no, that was me. That was, that was me. Was, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Bread of Stone Temple so, 21 Brett, Pilots. I don't know bread, seriously. Whoa. I can't remember. I always think of cake and heart when I hear bread, and those are different bands. Like, those, how, I mean, that's... It'd be difficult to name a band. We always talk about this, like now, because all the names were taken. Oh yeah, bread was taken. Bread. Never, yeah, I've never heard of it. So <laughs> was the, that the, almost the disciple? Band, huh? Was, like, like disciple? Yeah. No, like, was bread almost disciple? Did you almost name no, bread? No, no, no. But like the band Chair. I mean, you know, or, mm-hmm. or Spoon. Sh- Shoe. Spoon's band. Spoon is a band. Spoon is a band. I'm kidding. They're me. like a pretty popular alt rock band. Well, if Skillet's a band, very true. They actually had a skillet on their first album cover. Yep, and it they is did. the most ridiculous of all these. <laughs> Bread was an American soft rock band from Los Angeles, California. Here, give me a taste. I, I'm trying. I'm oh, trying. It's, it's uh, the cell service. And what's the song called? Uh, it's called "Everything I Own." It's the most popular song on Google Play. All right, let's check it out. Mm. Thirteen songs on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Whenever this starts, we dedicate this song to Travis's mom. What's your mom's name? Debbie. Debbie. Long distance dedication. <laughs> Going out to you from Brad. I feel like I know this. You sheltered me from her. Definitely Kept not. Kept me warm. Set me free. 
All of our listeners are like, wow, how much of this song are they going to play <laughs> in, ter- in terrible quality yeah, over enough, this? Enough to where we're going to owe them money by the end. I know, they're going to come, <laughs> come collecting. That's a good is song. That gonna, is that going to be a hidden track on the uh, worship album? <laughs> Just, hey, you know, I mean, Jesus is the bread of life. So yes. Man cannot listen on bread alone. Mm. <laughs> so true. Wow. And she also listened to Don Francisco and just a whole bunch of the older... <laughs> Don like beginning Francisco. of Christian music, yeah, yeah. Bands. very cool. Any Keith Green? Yes, nice. Yes. Keith Green. I don't think I've ever heard Don Francisco. I've seen all of his tape covers. <laughs> <laughs> had to be had to be honest about that. They weren't album covers. Right. They, they were tape co- cassette covers. People look a lot better on cassette covers. Well, it's, it's like true. it's a portrait shape, so it looks more like a presentable. Like, I just make it smaller. You can't see it as well. Mm, <laughs> less detail. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was very informative, guys. We've got a wide range of parental influences. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Our parents rule. Yeah. Goodbye, Mother and Father. <laughs> I, love I love you. you. That's an episode two throwback. Yeah. We are really just looping in the uh, mythology of this show. If you haven't heard every hit. episode of Bus Banner, goes into the mall. I haven't, actually. <laughs> you really haven't. I, haven't heard of, I need to go do that. <laughs> I have not heard of one. Andrew has not listened to a sing. He's like Matt Baird with Spoken's music. He won't listen to any of it after it's. I'm like the Miles Davis of podcasts. I haven't heard myself talk in 20 years. <laughs> I, know, I haven't heard myself talking 20 years ago in 20 years. <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> that was pretty good. I thought you were going to pull up uh, one of our podcast episodes and just start playing it. All right. <laughs> So obviously you guys come to a lot of disciple shows, so that's a big that's a big hobby. So what are some other Sarah Johnson hobbies in your life? Um, I do um, medieval style chain mail. Yes, you do. It's that's kind awesome. Of my thing, I guess. I I crochet a lot. I work a lot right now. Um, As a molecular biochemist. No, that's what I went to school for. I can't oh. get a job. Well, no, she's the hardest working. As long as I've known her, she's always had two jobs, you know, and is always bringing us uh, gift cards from wh- wherever she is currently employed. She supplied our uh, new uh, coffee maker. That is very true. Yes, it's awesome. It's amazing. So Sarah's, Sarah's one of those people that uh, that I applaud in the American workforce that gets it done. <laughs> she's like. I'm gonna get off work just to get off work and go back and clock in at the other place that I work. Pretty Hustling. much, yes. I, I get done at one job at six in the morning, go home, change, drive to the other job, start at seven. Then you come home and work on molecular biochemistry. <laughs> Wait, and then so, I sleep for like and you three dream hours? about molecular biochemistry. What? You're not wrong. Right. What are your work? What are your work hours like? How often, like, how much time in a day do you get to, like, be at home? Um, I do, kind of depends on when the one job wants me, but it's pretty consistently 80 hours a week. Woo! See, people are there even 80 hours in a week? No. (laughs) People always ask, like, how do we do it? You know, like, how do you guys do it? You know, you're away from home so long? Like, People that have two jobs I could not do have that. it oh, yeah. way worse than somebody who work for maybe two hours a day on show days. <laughs> on off days, we don't do anything. <laughs> Except our. What do we say about story. telling people that? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll bleep out those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she makes some awesome chain mail. She's got this one like chain mail. What did you say? Vest, top shirt. vest, shirt. That uh, has the cover of uh, the Oh God Save Us All Cairo, mm-hmm. that style Cairo that I've seen her wear to shows. She also made me a um, uh, cuff, I guess. Would it be a cuff wrist? Cuff Br- bracelet. Cuff yeah. bracelet. But it's like it's more than a bracelet because it's so wide. Right. It's almost like like a like a Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh you know, yeah. How she wears those 
cuff. Cuffs. Yeah, I yes. Guess. Cuffs. Cuffs. I don't know. And, uh, and so it's this big chain mail thing. I actually, I actually have it right back there. Yeah. It's uh, awesome. Yeah, it's very, very cool. I forgot mine. It's in my car at Travis's house. There you go. So how does one go about making chain mail? Where do you find the mail? Well, the first chains? of all, you think of a reason why people would want to forward on a letter to ten of their friends. <laughs> And when you write it up, you make them feel bad if they don't. And then when they get the letter, they think they might be cursed or that something bad's going to happen if they don't send the letter on to ten of their friends. It's kind of a pyramid scheme of the postal system. It all goes back to the uh, Stamp Act of 1776. <laughs> I was and wondering when, what, when, when that was going to get funny. I was like, he's, he's just going to keep going until he gets a laugh. I mean, <laughs> these guys aren't even paying attention. <laughs> when you go to deep sea fishing, you gotta wait a while to catch a marlin. <laughs> marlin caught. <laughs> he finally stamp act of yeah. seventeen. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Chainmail. How's it? How's it happen? Um, there's a company up in Canada that's actually called the Ring Lord that I buy wow. all of my raw rings from, and I just sit there with two pairs of suppliers, open a ring, link it to however many others, close it, repeat until I go cross-eyed. So do you buy, when you do the designs, you know, one of them's like just metal and then the, the one's red or black, do you have to buy red ones? And so yeah. you, you, you do the design yourself? Yeah, the they come in... You can need, you can get plain aluminum or an, like chemically anodized aluminum. And Molecular biochemistry. <laughs> it's actually really cool, and I kind of want to learn how to do it. That's we awesome. just asked somebody where steel comes. That wasn't on a podcast, though, right? No. That's one of those like maybe everybody knows the answer to that, but I just ignorantly <laughs> don't know the answer to that. So I'm asking yeah. him. I'm like, where? It was the it was the Canadian. Yeah. Last well, he VIP, kept. Yeah. Right? Our, our last VIP, Trevor. He because uh, he works for a contractor that does that kind of stuff project manager project manager mm-hmm. and uh and yeah i got your question but it was funny because he like didn't understand how like fundamental you were going with it he yeah, was like, like oh well it comes from the supplier they just yeah, send it over steel. i like where does steel well, come where from they, he's like oh but where does the steel supplier. yeah but where does it come how from how do you how do you make steel like, because <laughs> the store i'm thinking yeah. <laughs> i'm thinking in in the year 12 in the year of our lord 1200 because christianity won that's how we got the, the, yep. year, the lord 1200 um how how do they make a sword well, like I'm just walking out in the field, and I'm like, you know what? I'd love to make something out of metal. Where am I going to go? Right. How am I going to go do that? So it turns out it's ore that comes from mines. But I agree. Like, how did they decide? Hey, this shiny stuff in the ground or I'm in gonna, this cave is. I'm going to melt it in this bowl, yep. and then I'm going to like reshape it. That's yeah. like the, the the genius of man. Like, I really feel like you know, in the last hundred years, how genius we've become. But is it more genius in the last hundred years what we've done? Or like what we did a thousand years ago right. when we were making, you know, trebuchets or whatever for a war. I mean, how genius is <laughs> oh, that? Yeah, it's incredible. You know? Using yeah, the, the, like, pulley system. Yeah! Like, leverage. I mean, like building that. temples like 2,000 years ago, like Solomon's yeah. temple. Like, how did they do that? I know. It's crazy. You know? The pyramids, dude. I and mean, that's even farther ago. That's they you still don't really know how that's they right. got the pyramids built. Because uh, the stones that they cut are so large, and they're cut, like, with laser precision. Yeah. It's unreal. Same with uh, Easter Island, the uh-huh. the it row is. of heads. They, like, don't know how they got stones that big to all be lined up at that time. And Stonehenge. they, like, tried all these experiments on this, on this special I watched to try to move a giant slab of just plain rock that wasn't shaped like a head and they like couldn't get it more than you know a few hundred feet like at best and then it falls over and then like how are you gonna get it back up like, Dude, that's that's just a bunch of geniuses yeah it's like crazy. let's make a sword mm-hmm from or let's melt it down. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a huge <laughs> tangent. Sorry, I apologize. But that sword would not work on chain mail. No, it wouldn't. You so. can't. You can't come after Sarah with your sword. Nope. You better keep the swords at home because you can't hurt Sarah. She's gonna get her Wonder Woman cuffs up, <laughs> block the sword attack. Yep. And then you- actually, it's most of what I do is in aluminum because I don't like wearing 30 pounds of chain mail to a rock concert. So you probably could actually take me out with the sword. So aluminum <laughs> being more soft than what, like just normal. Yeah, clean swords. Metal? Swords would be steel. Aluminum's softer, and it's also a lot lighter. Lighter, right. softer, lighter. Right. So like that shirt that I've got is about six or seven pounds, and if it was steel, it would be over twenty. 
All right. This is by far the most metal conversation we've had on this podcast, guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes that we'd had when we were in Finland was the the they had that that fan in the front of the stage, and yep. I took a picture of the said. Finland has the best metal fans. Anyway, um, so moving on to Travis, your hobbies besides going to disciple concerts, work, work. We got another worker, <laughs> hustling. What do you do at work that makes it a hobby? <laughs> oh, asking the hard question. No pressure. A lot if of pressure. you don't answer, he can't say that he plays solitaire at work because you're going to get him in trouble. Seriously, Andrew. his boss listens to this podcast. Thanks, boss. <laughs> um, That's all we do is play at work, and we get paid for it. Do you go to other shows, non-disciple shows? I can't remember the last oh, one wow. that I went to. All Dang right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we are was the last? awesome. <laughs> I no don't, hobbies. Where do you work? Okay, I, favorite video game. I don't play video don't play games. Video games. <laughs> what about phone games? You know, like, like sports? No sports? Mm. Mus- musical instruments that you play? I play guitar. He's there he is. Player. So we knew we'd get to it. We knew we'd figure it out. <laughs> Do you write songs as well? I used to. I used haven't to written songs. one in about four years. You just gotta start, man. Yeah. Just gotta do it's it. It's been a long time. I know a guy yet. that gives songwriting lessons. I know a guy that gives guitar I, lessons. Shameless plug. Look at us patting each other on the back. You give songwriting lessons? Just started. I give drum lessons. Shameless plug. If you want songwriting lessons with Josiah Prince. How much are they? Well, you got to email for that information. What's your email? <laughs> JosiahPrinceLessons at gmail.com. Huh. Well, no, so I can tell I you, but I'll bleep it out. <laughs> so you can give me lessons? Sure, man. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can afford it, actually. Oh. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> incredibly natural way to neatly display all the details of your new business in an organic conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try. <laughs> Yeah, it was l- actually number six on our topic list of what to talk about. <laughs> this invisible topic yeah. list that we have here of things that we're supposed to be talking about today. We did oh. that when we first started doing podcasts, but now we're just pros. We just, yeah. we just yeah, roll just with it. it when we, we were noobs, we, we, yeah, we exactly. thought that would make it better. <laughs> it was Jason's idea. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, wow. <laughs> That's not even true, is it? Oh, I don't know. He, me, he was... Integral to the formation of the podcast. No, but like he didn't come up with a uh, subject list. I don't know. That was I feel collective. Like, yeah, it was probably collective. That was, yeah. a, that was a sarcastic. He only had one <laughs> topic. He wrote down aliens on a sheet of paper, and that was it. That's true. And we said it at the end of every podcast. We said it at yep. the end. Never His legacy about it. lives on. Yeah. Well, we were wondering how the pyramids got built. Ah! Oh, aliens! Aliens! Hey, yeah, that's it. Full circle. That's it. Well, that conversation's over. <laughs> <laughs> We were there was this Netflix series called The Pyramid Code. Yes. Uh, did you watch it too? Yeah. Yes. It's like eight episodes, and it was a little over the top about these theories and kind of conspiracy kind of things on on the pyramids and how um, they're built in these harmonically perfect ways to where literally like inside like musically like the the, the tones like are perfectly <laughs> like balanced to create this harmony. Um, with gravity and all this stuff, like, go ahead. In addition to the musical prowess that the pyramids represent, <laughs> they are lined up. The um, the pyramid of Giza is in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. That's the the name for it. And they're uh, in a perfect mirror of a stellar constellation. Yeah. There's three stars that mirror right where they are perfectly, like as far as the relative distance. And then the Mayan pyramids in Central America, there's a cluster of three pyramids that represent the same constellation exactly on the other side of the planet from those three pyramids. So mathematically, it's perfect. And basically the assumption is there must have been some like person or thing that they had in common because they built the same pyramid strip in the same place in the same part of the globe without ever knowing that that part of the world even existed, you know? Yep. Thousands of years apart. The Nephilim. <laughs> it's the giants. It's aliens. Say, I dare I say Satan? Dare you say. Bleep oh. that out. Oh. <laughs> Bleep that out. <laughs> Nothing better than building a uh, perfectly uh, acoustic room for a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope my coffin one day is like acoustically sound yeah. 
you know, to where we can get the greatest drum tones dude, out of my dead body. Yeah. Dude, what if like, what if uh, you know how uh, the, uh, the 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 sensors when you walk past something, and you know, the sensors on like on on paper towel dispensers. What oh, if yeah. what if my tombstone has a sensor on it where you you walk up, you know, and yeah. it's like till the day I die. <laughs> Sits you up. In there. <laughs> yeah, it's like the uh, Halloween props you get for your porch, where the skeleton starts moving. Or, or like I, I sit up and I go, ah! just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Thanks for visiting my grave today, <laughs> dude. The, you got like an animatronic chin. <laughs> oh, this is so dude, bad. Who would donate their body to science when they could do something awesome like this? The s- molecular biology. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, your coffin's gonna be clear acrylic. Dude, absolutely. <laughs> So all the so all the bugs and earthworms can see me, but they can't get to me to Actually, eat me. I'm hate to break it to you, but if you're underground, there's probably no light in there. But you could get it lined with the stuff that your kick drum is lined with right now. Lead walls. <laughs> so I should share this story because it's sort of mildly pertinent to what we're talking about. Good so. When I was 10 or so, I went to L.A. with my dad to go to a convention us, or something. For those of us not in the know, is that Louisiana? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, I'm talking Cali, bro. Oh, sick, dude. Los, <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> the Windy City. Uh, but yeah, we went down there for some kind of convention or something. And I just remember that we had a day off or free or whatever. And we went to this wax museum. There's a wax museum yes. in LA. And so, so this is like, you know. Like Madame Tussauds or whatever? Uh, maybe, that's yeah. Like the, that's like the famous one in LA, I think. Okay, yeah. I, I think it was the whatever the famous one is because my dad was like, oh, this would be cool. You know, and I was like 10, like, okay. <laughs> But it was pretty cool. Um, you know, I was spoiled already by CGI in movies, so uh, yeah. um, everything looked, you know, fake to me already. But they had an exhibit of Alien. And so they've got the Alien monster created by H.R. Giger, oh. as you well know. Of course. Who, who doesn't know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's like coming out of the wall. And it looks pretty realistic to the movie monster. And I'd never seen it at this point being 10 I was still like scared of it Yeah. so I'm walking by and it's like oh that's scary and it's in the dark place and they got a hazer and it's like flashing lights like it's like you're in the ship where yeah. it's like crashing or whatever and I walk by and they unbeknownst to me but notes to my dad <laughs> had a sensor on the front of it where when you'd walk by it would shoot like this air gun uh, so yes. it'd go like Tss! so I walk by and that is the scariest I've ever been in my life did you scream? I screamed and ran. <laughs> and, like, you know when your body does that thing where it shakes and you just kind of fall over because it's just, like, paralyzed with fear? No, I don't know. That. Um, <laughs> I've only heard about it. <laughs> no, that that actually happened to oh, me. Like, I was the scared as I ran, like, past the thing. And I was, like, probably too old to be that scared, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But, God, it just was so, like, it just made you it was jump because it was so loud. And, like, yeah. it's, like, spraying air on you out of the thing's mouth. Yes. Oh. I, I walked away. What was it? That, where uh, was this at? Wax Museum in L.A. Wax Museum in L.A. Did 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 I just make us all millionaires by coming up with an interactive tombstone? Think about this. <laughs> an interactive tomb. What if it was like a, a weatherproof monitor display where if someone walks by, you're just walking through the cemetery, and then all of a sudden this this music starts playing. You know how at funerals they're playing all like the different pictures mm-hmm. and they just kind of scroll through pictures? What if you have an interactive display at your tombstone? Dude, if I'm walking through a graveyard, the last thing I want to hear is music start playing. <laughs> but I think that we're probably the first generation of people that are like into our legacy enough. Like we want we, we want, <laughs> we want get, people to know. We want to get likes even It's beyond. the selfie of the afterlife. Yeah. It's the selfie yeah. of the afterlife. Yeah. Okay, no, check it out. So, so what if it was like an interactive display where you get to like pick, you know, like yeah. it's got like oh like gosh. ten different choices you can pick, like, you know, Andrew's first piano recital. It's like, oh, oh look at that. Wow, he's thirty five. Yeah, he's thirty five. That's so cute. <laughs> Mary I've never heard Mary had a little lamb so played so well. I'm only twenty nine. <laughs> well I know, you haven't learned yet. So. Yeah. That uh... day's yeah, we're looking we're looking into your future. But no, seriously like wedding day, you know, whatever. Oh walking in a daughter down the aisle, all these kind of uh, awesome moments of your life. As like non-traditional and like irreverent as it 
initially struck me. It actually does sound like it would be very like poignant and We just became millionaires, guys. Yeah. We need to like pitch this. There is a Robin Williams movie, the title is Escaping Me, where Escaping his me. job is <laughs> Yeah, it's like Despicable Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a prequel. Uh, not a cartoon, though. Oh. Before they were animated. But yeah, I don't know the title, and his job in the future is to edit this video. Everyone in the future has a like internal camera that's connected to their eyeballs. Oh, and wow. It, re- it records their entire life. It's, it's called... Two hour photo, isn't it? Area yeah, one hour photo. One hour photo. Yeah. yeah, but anyways, it's like your eyeballs record everything your whole life, and so his job is to edit um, all of the events that people want to remember together for like their burial, like for like this little like mini movie that plays like at their gravesite or whatever. So it's kind of like what you're talking about. So you'd have to go through all the bad moments of somebody's life to get right. to the good moments. So that's the that's the plot. Ah, oh, dude, yeah. that's crazy um yeah let's patent it yeah cool. let's do this let's, let's make this see. happen thanks guys yeah appreciate it guys <laughs> we'll thank you very we'll much it, yeah. absolutely. absolutely i will i will visit your grave oh that's really sweet probably what I'll, I'll have i'll have some kind of like where i judge a dance off where people like dance at my grave you know they're inspired like <laughs> oh my gosh I'll have a little have a little dance off <laughs> yeah you you're, you're <laughs> You can watch like Guardians of the Galaxy. You can, where you, watch, you can watch videos of you, see your legacy, or you can play Dance Dance Revolution. Or, and there's yeah. a pad there. Or connect your, not, the River Raft game on Xbox Connect. Insane. You know, maybe you can just play that at my grave. Like left and right, jump up and down, whatever. All right, moving on. What what other what other questions can we get out of our VIP Actually, guests here today? I have, I have one. It's about. We're gonna have to pry it out of them. Sarah, you went to school for molecular biochemistry, which no I love ever saying. No one know that. I know. But from this podcast, I know. That she's interested in that. Now, this may be an ignorant question, but is that a sort of combination of molecular biology and mele- <clears throat> it's a lot to say molecular chemistry, or is it a whole different thing? Technically, what I went to school for was biology pre medicine, but I did a lot of biochemistry classes which is like how chemical reactions work on a cellular level. Okay. And molecular cell biology, which is a lot of like what individual proteins are doing inside cells. Okay. And that was the stuff I was really interested in in my upper level classes. Okay. Props to you, man. Yeah, that's probably way over all of our heads. I literally am over here eating potato chips, dreaming about like monster trucks while you're sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Such a moron. Potato like, chips are awesome, though. I, like, I couldn't even so listen to you explain how to do it. My lowest level of biology class, I barely, barely passed it. <laughs> I think I passed it because my teacher felt sorry for me. That's yeah, sweet. that was She's like that Joey um, kid. He's gonna be something, but he ain't gonna be a biologist. <laughs> you know, if you volunteer to get dissected, you get a uh, free pass on the. Class. It's true. Automatic what? Eight. Yep. My my biggest like fascination with what you're talking about is like we talk about outer space. Do you remember the ten dimension uh, podcast yep. where we talk about you know like basically the universe is just a big atom or a big molecule and we're all just kind of spinning inside of it. Like there's outer space, but when you go to inner space. It's like the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's worlds. There's like literally worlds inside of us doing these things. And I was I went to a science museum with Avery yesterday and they were showing I can't remember the exact terminology, but they were showing these these little uh, things. I can't I can't <laughs> even think like attacking these other little things in, inside. It's like there's wars happening inside yeah. of me right now. They're like attacking Is that each like, other. Like uh, white blood cells attacking like platelets? Is that a thing? It'd be like white blood cells and antibodies, antibodies attacking viruses or bacteria or whatever you've got going. It's crazy. So amazing. Yeah. Like Occasionally tree pollen, you know. Yes. <laughs> who's to say that they're not down there having their own podcast talking about, I wonder what this giant thing that we're inside of is. Yeah, who's to say? Well, they probably wouldn't call it a podcast because there's probably no Apple. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Um, have you ever seen the movie Expelled with Ben Stein? I have. You have. I know. 
Sarah, no? I actually he, 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 he makes this case about, uh, to Richard Dawkins, who is a famous atheist, he makes this case about uh, molecules and like where, or was it molecules? Like where do molecules come from? Yeah, so like basically he's making this case like how they have their own little worker bee system inside the molecules and or cells. No, it's cells. It's cells. That's what he says. So like ha- he, he makes he makes this case about like just explaining a cell and how like science can't explain how it's got this brain and this whole system of people working inside this little little cell and he's like where did that come from and then the atheist response was like well probably on the backs of crystals and then you're like yeah what <laughs> that's pretty if you think god is insane like on the backs of crystals is maybe a little more insane yeah but it, th- there's a lot of good scientists out there that don't necessarily believe in creation Richard Dawkins is not one of them <laughs> <laughs> right that's what's interesting to me is that uh, at least in my you know experience and reading and stuff like there's so many uh, great Christian scientists you know who kind of have this reconciliation with creation and evolution um, which I would have to say is where I fall um, in my own beliefs I don't know obviously who can know really but there's, you have all these great Christian scientists, and then you have a lot of non-Christian scientists who would argue against it. But really, they're looking at... I feel like a lot of times they're not saying that one thing happened or one thing didn't happen. They say the same thing happened, but then they just interpret it differently. They both say, oh, the eye is this incredible you know, um, piece of machinery that is so complex and unreal. And a Christian would say, well, that's amazing because God had this intention behind it and an atheist would say well no it's we can see this chain of like you know primitive eyes that grew into these eyes and all this stuff and it's really just a question of intent and assigning the intent to God I I just think it's interesting like a lot of people I think would see it as these two sides who say opposite things but I feel like they agree actually on a lot more than we give them credit for but then they just interpret the data different ways. I don't know. Yeah, it's like we know at a molecular level how a lot of stuff works. Like you can look at like, okay, here's how the body breaks down glucose and turns it into energy. And it follows these specific steps every time. And here's all of the little enzymes that are involved. And we know all of that. And we can even like take sort of take pictures of here's sort of what the enzymes look like um it's just did that happen by chance or did it was God involved or some yeah. combination it's, thereof it's, it's amazing it's amazing I mean yeah the the chances of all of this intentional design and, and order to things how there's just such an order like you said yeah it's the exact same way that breaking down glucose there's this order to how it happens mm-hmm. the chances of this order of everything you know even even the uh, the, uh, the the planets moving away from the sun this this order of how everything is rotating and spinning and seasons and mm-hmm. access all these things that are happening this order to all the chances of all this order happening by chance are obviously extremely slim there there's right. just so much evidence for for a, a designer a creator but it's still either way you go it's it's just absolutely breathtakingly amazing and fascinating yeah well and i think what's interesting is that a lot of i think we don't give non-christian like uh scientists a lot of credit sometimes because in their minds i think a lot of them see it as equally uh, amazing and vast because a lot of them would come back and say well yeah the chances are slim but who's to say there haven't been millions of universes that have failed and like ours is the first one that you know it, it, like all these different things happened and minute variables in each instance of these universes and ours is the first one that is working kind of uh, and they would like marvel at that and think and speculate and think oh that's amazing and kind of be wowed in their own way um, but again, it comes down to, yeah, there's, it's, it's just, you know, how I guess your own convictions uh, pull you. Yeah, I think science is a continual proof for, for intelligent design, if you want to call it that. I would say for God because it continually answers and 
Sarah, you're the only real scientist here, so you got to back me up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it continually answers the question of how, but it never answers the question of why. Yeah. And that's what you know faith does for us is right. like not answering it really is just extending the uh, knowledge that we don't know. I guess <laughs> faith <laughs> fills the void. Um. Uh, as far down the rabbit holes you can go with science, or as far as we've gone, which is, I think, pretty far, um, we've gotten all the way down to the you know building blocks, you know atoms and um, nanoparticles and this kind of thing, and it and it answers a lot of questions about how, but never a question about why. Like um, we, we've disassembled the car, and <laughs> we're starting to understand how the carburetor works and how the wheels spin, but we don't know where we're going or why somebody built it or you know what I mean yeah it's a great analogy I think where I land on a lot of it too um, as far as like even like the evolution talk and all that is when I think about God and you know my faith in him you know the way Genesis talks about it is like he spoke the universe into existence he spoke light into existence he, he spoke all these things into existence which are pretty big things like all the vital stuff that we need to survive he spoke into existence which is makes him a very big god who is able to do whatever he wants and he is capable of anything so i think for people to be so blind to limit god to well this is how he actually did it and because like for me where i land i guess is like you know what i don't know if evolution happened I don't, I don't know if I believe in it, but if God wanted to use a process of evolution to get us to where we're at for a certain amount of time, then I think he's full on capable of that. And who's to say that the six days of creation were just six 24-hour days? What if a day was a million years? Because, you know, we're talking about a God who exists outside of time, who is so big. And so when people get, like, so, like, ramped up against each other on these fights, it's just like... Man, I, I mean, I believe in a God that can literally do anything. So, like, I personally don't care. Right. Like, I mean, if he if he chose to use it this way and, and um, you know, he, like, absolutely created us, like, full on, or if he used a process of evolution, that's up to him. You know, I got no control over it, and I'm here. <laughs> and, and if it was six 24-hour days, which I don't fully own um, – like fully believe because I don't think there was 24 hour days at that point because right. when was that when was that even created wasn't there a point in history where it was like a calendar was made for 24 hour days oh, and stuff yeah, I mean, could be wrong uh, well I mean I there was a whole bunch of them at yeah. one point and they kind of just got weeded out and yeah but I think God and science work together like so well because I mean he created it you know and he created all these complex things like I mean our bodies just my own individual body is a complex is amazing yeah <laughs> I, mean, I just look at it's myself just God. And I'm just bro so many shirtless selfies obviously there is a God because Joey's yeah. bod is rocking bod <laughs> is hot <laughs> oh my God oh my God thanks Jesus oh man I you know we're we're basically I will I will defend the other side because no one's really defending the other sure. side but I don't I'm not on either side but the you know where they would they would have a problem with a lot of the things that we're saying is that it it does encourage people to not believe the word of God literally right. on a literal basis so you know that's where they have the problem of it it's like if you don't believe that that the earth was created in 6 days then why believe verse 2 and 3 and 4 and right. 5 and 6 you know so it goes down the rabbit hole of like of doubting the word of god and so that's that's the other side yeah infallibility and the all infallibility that. of the word of god which i actually do believe the the word of god is in, infallible uh, and and so whenever i'm encountering these types of things uh, i i I think that maybe we don't understand some of the words and the way that they're used because, for example, Jesus is standing in front of Jews who had the entire Old Testament memorized and they did not recognize he was the Messiah. So, is it possible for a human being to be deceived? <laughs> it is. Is it possible for us to not completely understand the words that are, that are used? Yes, it is. So, I believe that the Word of God is absolutely infallible, but I also believe that I don't understand it completely. Right. And that's, I think, what people are afraid of a lot of times is, is in, in a lot of circumstances or churches or groups of Christians, there's a fear of admitting that and, and kind of feeling like, yeah, if you admit that you don't understand it, 
then oh well I'm gonna I'm gonna sound silly to my non-Christian friends or how can I stand up for my faith if I don't fully understand it? I can't even explain how a jet engine is made <laughs> and put together. How and am you, I supposed to? Plane. I yeah. get on a plane. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. I don't I don't get on this plane and go. I'm. I just. I don't know if I have enough faith to actually ride in this plane to Los Angeles because I don't understand it completely. But yet, people won't accept Christ because they need to completely understand a God who created the entire universe before they're going to jump in the plane with Him. And to me, that actually serves the opposite purpose. Where why would you want to surrender your life to a God that you completely understood and you had totally figured out? Why would you believe that that? figure could save you from hell and from your sins he's on un- unworthy of being god if you can figure him out exactly absolutely hey that got heavy quick <laughs> <laughs> this what? is the heaviest conversation <laughs> <laughs> so metal, bro. enter metal riffs <laughs> into the podcast yeah, I guess we can all right up. last questions for you guys what is the furthest that you have ever dri- actually yeah, furthest you've ever driven to a disciple show, Travis Durrell Eden. <laughs> <laughs> Battle Creek, Michigan, April twenty second. How far Western. was that for you? Are you Ten you're Missourian, aren't you? Yes. Is it Missourian? It's Missourist. Is it Missourist? Missourist. <laughs> yes. Missourian. Yes. Is that how you say it? Okay. How Something. far was that? Uh, about ten and a half hours. And ten I and a half hours. In nice work. Indianapolis and stayed the night in my car because the hotel was overbooked. So. Oh. All right, Sarah. That's dedication. Yeah. Um, Excellent. I did Sarah Washington Mahatma Courthouse, Gandhi Johnson, <laughs> Washington Courthouse, Ohio, and that was like either late May or early June 2015. It was like right around June one. And for for clarification, I live in Minneapolis, so I left. I was so at far. a family thing in. Two Harbors, Minnesota, which is like all the way up in northern Minnesota. I left there at 10 o'clock at night, got to Cincinnati at about 4 the next afternoon, had lunch with a friend, made it to the show for doors. It was about a 16 hour drive. What kind of math that is? 16 hours. Okay. There you go. Wow. Wow. Nice work. Nice work. Now, Sarah actually has basically um, taken taken the most uh, physical punishment for coming to a disciple show she's actually <laughs> she actually was wrecked on the way oh, to man. a show yeah I thought um, you were talking about us making her hug us <laughs> well we can talk about <laughs> that, that, too. that I don't too. know how comfortable um, she'd be talking about that the I was this was like the first year of City Rock Fest so spring 2015 I was headed to the Minot North Dakota show got about an hour into the drive and got rear-ended by a semi and basically destroyed your car completely destroyed everything from like just behind the driver's seat back was in the back seat of my car cool. um, and you had moderate I, injuries serious moderate injuries, injuries. Moderate injuries i busted my face all up and yeah. i've got some permanent back and hip problems it was it was a mess I'm still, that was three years ago, I'm still dealing with car insurance lawyers. Oh, jeez. So the lesson, don't get hit the, by a truck. The lesson to be learned, yeah, yeah don't yeah. get hit by a semi. <laughs> Whatever you do. Would not recommend. <laughs> Which I have been hit by a semi. Right. Uh, so, yes, I would. I will second that as Were well. You on your way home? Is that what it was? Yeah, I remember we dropped bus, him off. You dropped me off in Louisville. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so the bus dropped me off in Louisville. I was driving home and semi got me you group texted us a picture of the car and we were all like still riding in Nashville I think yeah we were still like we were, were still on the bus yeah yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Wow. yeah that was crazy so yeah. can I tell the can I tell the hugging Sarah can I talk about that sure oh, I don't right. have a photo of my car on me right now I'll bring it tomorrow I don't have cell signal here either I remember so. it it's it's pretty um, yeah it's rough. it was bad it's like like someone playing with Play-Doh mm. they just put it in shapes that it was not meant to go in um yeah. Sarah, when Sarah first started coming to Disciple Show, so I recognized her like, I don't know, the second, third, fourth, fifth Disciple Show you go to, the band starts recognizing you and say, hey, I remember you from blah, 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 blah. And so I'm a hugger. That's how I roll. I like to hug. And uh, so I was like, hey, I remember you. And I gave Sarah a big hug, and she literally responded to that hug zero (laughs) percent she like statued me it was not reciprocated it was not a reciprocated hug she statued me she was like 
I if I'm not expecting it, I kind of freeze. <laughs> she had no idea. There's like, what is this hug thing that you were trying to do to me? I don't like it. Stop it. Don't touch me. I don't know you. And uh, that just basically um, fueled your fire. Just fueled my fire. <laughs> just reinforced my resolve. I was like. This girl will hug me. It may take 20 shows to do it, but she will hug me. And so that's that was every time I saw her. Like So the next time I saw her, and I gave her a hug, and I acknowledged it, and I said, I know you're not going to hug me back, but I'm doing it anyway. And I, I would just laugh, and I'd hug her. And then, so like each show, she would start to just hug me just a, just a little bit. And now, now, now we're, we're like, friends. now we're yeah. like, yeah, full on just hugging. Just like, this is Sarah, she's my friend, and we hug. Right, Sarah? The surefire way to get Kevin to do something is to tell him he can't do it. Yeah, absolutely. Then it's just, a, then it's just you You were my project for many years that I have conquered, and I've forced you Great. to hug me. Yeah. <laughs> it's hey, that's okay. Some, some people don't like, you know, that they're just not wired that way. Like, hugging is not the way that they would... How, so how would you show affection to somebody because hugging is not your thing would it be like doing an act of service through what's the love languages yeah yeah uh, words of affirmation gifts acts of service quality time quality time gifts or service usually gifts or service she did bring us a Keurig so she does she is great a, a amazing gift giver she brings yeah, us cups. gifts yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah get gifts for sure yeah don't touch me I'll give you gifts leave me alone I want from now on only molecular biochemistry themed <laughs> oh gifts Gosh, you, I have. A it makes him feel smart to say that that's out loud. Like shaped like a little chemistry beaker, and it's got all the lines on it, and it's oh, nice. my favorite thing. I think they have them on Think Geek. Also, everything that could be a gift does have molecular biology. Oh, if you think about it, mind blown. You are a gift guru. <laughs> He's a scientist. Yes. <laughs> cool guys. Well, good. Hey, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks for liking our music so much and traveling to so many shows. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah. So much. Travis was actually in a in a disciple music video. This is true. I was, yes. The yes. fan the fan film. Yeah. It was a fan film that Joel Burris, who does a lot of our stuff now, I think that's kind of what got the ball rolling. He's, uh, he's coming to the show tomorrow. Joel's yeah. coming to the show tomorrow. So that's kind of what got the ball rolling of us working with Joel a lot. Joel did our Kickstarter um, video, which was probably one of the most amazing videos that that we've ever that we've ever had and uh and joel's probably going to do some music videos in the future but he did a fan film yes for with our b-sides um bring the dead to life uh what was the name of our b-sides project vultures, vultures. <laughs> um so the song bring bring the dead to life travis was the star of the show he was uh he, Featuring Travis Durrell Eden. Yep. Speaking of uh, like tombstones and stuff, it's right along. It was. I, I got buried you, alive. You got buried alive. Was that was that traumatic? A to little be, bit. To be. Were yeah. you? Was it actually kind of creepy? And it was really gross. It was very <laughs> muddy. Very, very muddy. muddy. Well, and I had to work like, that nice night clothes, too. I feel like so it was like. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of. I'm sure it was. There's a lot of cleanup too, but I had to work that night too, and oh, it's like, come on, Joel, hurry up, get the shot, <laughs> and then yeah. It was a lot going on that day. But, uh, That's very, very <laughs> cool, man. I loved the, um, I loved the, um, was animation? Is that what you would call it? Where he did the animation in the video where the, it came up? the plant growing. Yeah, yes. the plant growing up. Yes. Alert, dude. Yeah, sorry guys <laughs> for that haven't seen the video yet. It's on YouTube. Yeah. So it is on YouTube. Is you on have YouTube. YouTube. Bring the dead to Everyone life. Has so if you want to know what Travis looks like, go watch the, uh, <laughs> the video of Bring the Dead Looked to Life. Looked like. That was two years ago. <laughs> no, it's not that different. Is he that different? Is He's he got a beard different? now. Or a goatee. A goatee. You could be a youth pastor. <laughs> it's like Except the questionnaire for youth pastor qualifications. Uh, do you know the Bible? No, that's not on there. Do you, are you good with communicating? No, that's not on there. Wow. Are you? Do you have a goatee? Okay, you're hired. Uh, hired. You're hired. Insta, insta hired. Yep. Insta yeah, hired. At least one visible tattoo. Yes. Yep. You do have a visible tattoo. Yep. Two. You are youth pastor qualified. I. Sure. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't get Joey going. He's gonna be, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get squirmy. He's uh, going he, to he, he, about mega churches. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, I was about to give you the qualifications for a mega church. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. No, it's actually, not. I'm I'm too busy making tacos. Joey has started six <laughs> mega churches. That's where his bitterness you comes to, from. Uh, you, have to, you have to say all the things that the senior pastor tells you to say. 
That's requirement number one. There's still a lot of head shaking going on in this podcast. You can't see this. Yes. A lot of head shaking. Yes, so each. Shake on our heads. Can I tell you, when me and my uh, wife got yeah. married, uh, you know, I was 30 when I got married. And she's just like a year younger than me. But we had just such this young adult mindset that we were still going to like college age uh, church things oh, okay. because we were like in our minds we were still 21 22 you nice. know that kind of mindset because oh. we were just you know well, just getting married God. late yeah so we were literally hanging out with college age kids going to church all the time because because that was a thing so yeah so so young adult ministry is actually for those still? who are living deceived you know <laughs> <laughs> they just they just they you feel 21 yeah, so you want to hang out with 21 year olds so you just you know hang out with them which, you know, we just got married a year ago, so now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, happy uh, first and a half anniversary. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, good job, man. We did talk about time travel a lot last episode, so we did. there's probably some of that in play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> whoever dies first out of the four of us, we will make that animated grave thing happen. I literally well, I literally will be laughing from six feet under if that happens. Because I just think that's a funny thing. We'll be able thing. to afford it if it happens, like, while the band is still going to because we'll sell so many records if one of us dies that while the band is happening yeah we'll be able to afford it is ex- ex- the band people. never ends <laughs> this is an extreme well yeah a art is eternal um truth yeah, i our garfunkel, our garfunkel. <laughs> he will live forever um like a bridge over water, yeah man it, it, <laughs> it cannot be stopped no we actually have a morbid fantasy disciple <laughs> it's extremely more but let's just go ahead and put it out there because put if this does there. happen you know we can at least they you can go back yeah, and be referenced yeah, totally. and said they'll we know ha- our game plan they know our game plan we have this morbid fantasy that if if one of us dies that it's going to be so awesome that not for most <laughs> <laughs> you're a little late for the big for the mega churches <laughs> exactly not from a personal standpoint yeah Cause yeah, if you're dead, you know who cares, whatever. But if if we die, it's like whenever we say that, it's like we die like like right after like Michael Jackson, you know, if he, yeah, oh, yeah, whoever, uh, Keith Green, whoever, you know, they're just iTunes Im- sales skyrocket. iTunes Any sales. New album is going to be the most successful. One. Prince dies. What happens the week after he dies? It's like that's all anybody's buying on yeah. iTunes. I mainly- Dude, I live like 20 minutes from Paisley Park. It was kind of nuts. Yeah. What's that? It's like remember Prince before oh, he's gone, gone. but the, like the music is not going anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Well, this, it mainly comes up because Joey gets scared that we're gonna die a lot. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, you know that you're gonna die of being sick, or that I'm, we're gonna I'm die. More, I'm more personally <laughs> personally scared of myself dying. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't really ever think of y'all. I well, have no, well, I have anxiety disorder. But I always comfort him by saying, "Hey, man, if it's you die, awesome. yeah, just we're... know that in." We actually encourage you yeah. to die because that would be awesome for well, Christ us. wants us to die to ourselves. I think that's what Kevin means. Some people, some people have an irrational fear that that we'll all die at some point. That's so. I hate you all mind. so much. <laughs> so, so misguided, divided. Um, anyway, we ain't dying anytime soon, so keep listening to this podcast. Thank but, you. Yeah. But if we do, yeah. our but album do. sales are going through the roof. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Sarah and Travis, for being our guests. Y'all are awesome. Say so you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for letting us hang out on your bus for like an hour and a half here. Of course. Thanks for yeah. having yeah. We're going to have some dinner here in a minute, and then uh, on stage Q&A, and then a rock show on a Wednesday night at a high school. There you go. It's a good time. It's bus banter with Phyllis. Yes. At Phyllis's life on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Find me. He runs the, uh, the, the, the bus life. account. Yep. That, <laughs> that's All me. Right, y'all. Put it out there. See you next time. <laughs> Unless we get abducted by aliens. (laughs) 